Welcome to Model Steam Engines and Boilers Part 10. This is an edited compilation of interesting and useful information when building model steam engines and boilers. These edited extracts are taken from a series I made a while back called A Model Steam Plant with Three Steam Engines. In this video I'm going to show the parts that I'll be using in the construction of this steam plant. Most of the parts for the steam plant are made by a company called Cotswold Heritage and these are all factory built models. And here's the hand pump to fill the boiler. I really do like the design of these hand pumps, they're very chunky. I think this is going to be the approximate position for the major components, but I also need to construct a water tank and a condenser oil trap. This is the main gas jet that fits in the burner inside the boiler. Unfortunately, the pipe's a bit too short to connect the gas tank to the boiler in this installation. And here are three displacement lubricators, one for each engine. This is a dummy governor that was fitted to the aerial engine, and it was already broken off when the engine arrived. The engine was delivered in person by the owner, so it wasn't damaged in the post. Here's a close-up of the governor, and as you can see, it's a non-functional governor, it's a lost wax casting. It should be easy enough to repair. It's time now to examine the steam engines, and the first one is called an aerial. This is an overhead crankshaft engine, and it's very nice indeed, very well made, very well painted, very well finished. When running new steam engines, you generally get this black oil on parts. But after a while, as you run in, or break in the engine, this black oil disappears. It can, however, be a sign that something is misaligned. To start with, I'm going to wipe off all the black oil residue and re-oil the engine, because I'm going to run it. I'm making sure that all of the moving parts of the engine get a liberal application of my oil mixture. I'm probably applying a little bit too much, but in my opinion, you can never have enough oil on a steam engine. So here we go. Well, it seems to run okay. It's quite powerful. It's a bit of a knocker, but then again, it is stood on my soundboard. I don't know if anyone's noticed, but I put a new board on my workbench. This is a large melamine board, six feet long by two feet wide. And this piece of melamine is mounted on blocks on the bench, so it's a hollow soundboard. As you can see in this clip, the black residue is coming back, but it doesn't seem as bad as the previous black residue. During the construction of this steam plant, you will see a lot of these engines running. So hopefully they will all be broken in or run in by the time the steam plant is finished. I'll stop talking for a while so you can just listen to the engine running. Sometimes very well built steam engines will knock if the valve timing is retarded, but the valve timing on this engine seems to be okay. This is the centerpiece of the steam plant, and now the one to the left. This is also a vertical type steam engine, but it's quite a lot smaller than the aerial. Time to see how this one runs. Well, it's very wheezy. I'm not sure what's going on here. I'll pump some more oil into it. And as you can see, I'm pumping oil into the exhaust port, because you can do that. But you do need to rotate the engine in reverse to suck the oil into the steam chest. Despite having plenty of oil in the steam chest and the cylinder, the engine is still a bit wheezy. Have a listen to it, I'll turn the volume up. The third engine of the trio is called a Perseus. And as we all know, Perseus is part of Greek mythology and he was responsible for cutting the head off Medusa the Gorgon. Which I thought was a bit unkind, really. There she was, sat in a cave, just minding her own business, quietly turning anyone who wandered into her cave into stone, well, just like anybody would. And then along comes Perseus with a great big sword and hacks her head off. And he didn't even have the courage to look her in the face while he was doing it. He had to look through a mirror. As I don't think mirrors had been invented at that time, he just polished up his shield so he could see his face in it, or Medusa's face. The engine's been oiled, I've connected the compressed air, and off it goes. 
I think I'll run this engine in slow motion for a while to let the video play out. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. <laughs>